Hi, everyone. Uh, so I guess it's the above the time for the first talk about testing of Angular applications. Uh, which one of you is uh, implementing uh, tests like a daily routine? Okay, I guess that's at least half of the audience. And uh, okay, so let's start. Uh, my name is Tomasz Borowski, and I am a front-end developer at JCommerce, and I also am a trainer at uh, Angular in Space workshops. And uh, today I'm going to tell you some few things about Angular components and unit testing. So during this presentation, I would like to answer such questions like, why component is so special in testing? Uh, what testing tools do we get from an Angular? Uh, how to deal with the dependencies of our components in tests? And I will try to show you some example of the implementation of uh, components tests. So. Let's begin with the question, why component is so special in testing? Well, it's because of the nature of the component, which is heavily based on the HTML template. Uh, the template uses uh, property bindings to display the data. It uses event bindings to handle user actions. Uh, it may also introduce some uh, further uh, dependencies, like child components, directives, or pipes. And uh, very often, the template contains some logic, such as template-driven forms. So that's why uh, we have a lot of room in our templates for bugs. And we really have to test our components through interaction with the component's template. And uh, what kind of tools do we get from an Angular for testing that? Well, we have a test bed, which gives us configure testing module method which allows us to prepare a minimalistic ng module that would be uh, used for rendering a component and uh, would be used in our tests. Uh, also, on the test bed, we have a create component method, which allows us to create a component, and that function returns us a component fixture object. And that object contains a uh, number of references to the useful stuff for the testing of component, such as the reference to the component's instance, to the native element of the component, and the reference to the debug element, which is an Angular wrapper for a native element. Also, debug element gives us such methods like uh, trigger event handler for calling uh, Angular events. Uh, it has a reference to the component's injector, and it has some methods for finding stuff in our templates. All right, so um, the component fixture also has this method called detect changes. And since we are using the, uh, we are triggering manually the change detection in our tests by default, we'll be using that function in component tests, tests a lot. And uh, what you can see on this slide is just uh, small part of the API that uh, Angular offers for unit testing, you should, uh, you should uh, really check it uh, out what's there more. OK, but before, before we jump into a testing a component, we have to think about our dependencies and how to deal with them. Well, what could be a dependency of a component? It can be an input data passed from the parent component. It can be an injected service to that component. And it could be some uh, elements from the template, like child components, directives, or pipes. And all those dependencies has to be provided within the, within the components test to run uh, the tests and render that component. So for the complex dependencies that require importing further dependencies, we should prepare mocks. And those mocks should be a simplified implementations of some child components and Angular services. And uh, that's why uh, we'll cut the further dependencies out of our tests. And uh, how do we mock those elements? Well, in case of mocking simple functions, we can use the just means spy on function, which allows us to define the method's result in tests and track the calls of that function. Uh, when we would like to mock the components, uh, when we would like to mock uh, the Angular service, we can just simply f uh, implement 
the class that would be extending the original ca class. And one of my favorite uh, choices here is to implement the constructor, which has no parameters, so no further dependency injections here. And it would call the inherited constructor by nullifying all its dependencies. And finally, in order to make a, make a component, we can just implement a simplified component, which has the same selector as the original one, and sh it should have the same list of inputs and outputs, but the template of that component and the constructor should not introduce any other dependencies. Okay, so that's it for a theory. Now let's look at the example. So, I've implemented a small app. It's a spaceship app that uh, allows a uh, user to build, attack, repair, and destroy spaceships. And it displays the name of the fleet as an input. Uh, from the architecture point of view, this application is built with two component, components, the space fleet component and the spaceship component. Uh, but both those components have their own dependencies. For instance, the space fleet component depends on the fleet name input, which is passed from the app component. Uh, also, space fleet component injects the spaceship service, which delivers the spaceships for the list. And the spaceship service also is injecting local storage service for storing spaceships in local storage. On the other side, we have a spaceship component, which is based on an input in form of the spaceship property. And it also uses a long click directive which uh, enables us to uh, attack or repair a spaceship. So, uh, in this short presentation, I would like to test a space fleet component. So, we'll be checking if we are able to render the spaceships and if we are able to see the fleet name and uh, if we are able to create new spaceships. But before, before we jump into the code, I would like to make uh, some preconditions. So. I'm using here Jasmine and Karma as the standard uh, setup from the Angular CLI project. Uh, I'll be executing, uh, executing tests with the uh, ng-test command. And since I'm making a web application, I mean that uh, those tests should be run into a browser. So I can use the standard JavaScript API that is available in the browser. So let's jump to the code. Uh, just a second. Okay. Oh, maybe before a uh, code. Uh, this is an example of the application. Uh, we can do pew 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 pew. Kill those nasty uh, vipers, uh, vi uh, riders, and produce new ones. As and you can see, we are using here Angular animations. So it is pretty cool. We can heal them just to kill them. <laughs> and he's gone, <laughs> right? So yes, that's that's the feature. Okay, so uh, when you know what we are going to test, let's implement some tests. So uh, as for a beginning, we have this describe block that uh, describes that we'll be testing a space fleet component, and uh, here we have a setup of the test in the before each block. So we, uh, here we are using a testbed to configure a testing module. So we are providing a noob animations module just to fulfill the requirement for the animation stuff in Angular. And I'm declaring such components as space fleet component, which will be tested, and the mocked version of the spaceship component. In the providers array, I'm registering under the name of spaceship service, actually the class named mocked spaceship service. In the next lines, I'm creating a component with a create component method. Then I, I'm setting up the input, right? And finally, I'm calling the components injector to get an instance of the spaceship service. Well, it, was, it will be actually the mock spaceship service instance. And I'm using spy on to track calls over the create ship method and to track calls for get spaceships method. And I'm here forcing that uh, each call of this method should return a value, which will be an observable 
created with an off function that will contain uh, mocked spaceships. And we have two spaceships, one Viper and one Raptor. All right, so uh, the last thing in that setup is actually calling change detection with the detect changes method. So everything sh uh, should be rendered fine after this step. So the first test is already passing. It is getting generated with an uh, Angular CLI. So it just checks if uh, we are able to create an instance of the component. So let's implement the next test. So uh, let's check if we are able to see the name of the fleet. So let's implement text content variable. And let's use the fixture uh, object and native element. And let's use text content property. Okay. So now we have the text representation of that component. So we can make make an expectation that this text content right, should contain your lead. Right? Hey, seems to be OK. And let's run it. Ah. Uh. That was done. Uh, that one was on purpose. <laughs> it's not your fleet. It's my fleet. Okay, it's my fleet. Okay, so I make a smooth correction here, and it again, and now the test is passing. Yes, nice. <laughs> All right. So, the second case, we would like to tell if we are able to see two spaceships. Okay, so let's find them. Const uh, ship nodes. Okay. Let's use fixture. And then let's use native element. And here we have a nice method like query, uh, query selector uh, all method. And we'll pass the selector of that uh, child component, which is up spaceship. Okay. So in the ship nodes variable, we expect to have uh, two elements. So let's make that expe expectation ship nodes length two equal two. Right. So let's test it. Zoom, 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 zoom. Yes, three tests passing. Well, we are almost there. So one more test to go. Let's find if we, can, if we can trigger the spaceship production. And we actually be testing if we are able to call uh, the create spaceship method on the spaceship service. Since uh, the component is not meant to uh, produce spaceships, it orders somewhere. So let's find a button for creating a spaceship. Create button here. Okay. Uh, fixture. Native element. Now let's use query. 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 Selector. Okay. Uh, function. And uh, I use an ID of create Viper button to produce Vipers. So now once I have a, a button uh, in this variable, I will just use it to click it. Okay, and in a return, I expect. Okay, I expect that spaceship service and create ship method will be called. Okay. Okay, let's put it in the separate line. Okay, let's run it. Moment of truth. Yes, all of the tests are passing, so we're done here. And we can move on to the presentation. <laughs> okay. So, uh, to sum it up, we just implemented the tests for the Angular components. It's not that hard, no. But uh, uh, what's next? Well, there is a nice guide about testing. It's very long, but it's nice. 
So you should really check it out, uh, read from the top to the bottom, and you will see different approaches for unit testing, especially unit testing of Angular components. So you will have your own uh, ideas for testing, and have it, having that uh, solid test for components is like a very heavy, uh, having a solid proof that your components work and not just an impression. Okay. So thank you for attention. And see you there.